God in thee I trust. Yes, Do not let me be ashamed. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Oh, yes. Indeed, none of those who wait for thee will be ashamed. Without cause, will be ashamed. Yes, Lord. Make me know thy ways, O Lord. Yes, Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. Lead me in thy truth. Oh, 
Father God. That we can go out in this dying world, Lord Father God. This sinful world. To tell other people about the goodness of you, Lord Father God.
how many people have the rights to do many things and other people who are special can do many things. My dream is that one day everyone have equality. But I, I think that God has a plan to do everything right. And one day this dream will be real. I hope this, this, that this dream will come true and that everyone can have equal rights. I dream that there will be no violence and cruelty here and everywhere. I want everyone to have a great time and peace with others. This world is made for good times. I dream that one day I will graduate from Carnegie Vanguard High School, go to my dream college, and make an impact on the world with the help of God, my family, my friends, and teachers. I dream that the world could be a non-violent place. We shouldn't have to be worried about leaving the house when it's night or when it's dark out. I dream that everyone can agree on making an effort, making decisions, and trying to preserve the beauty and nature of Earth instead of destroying it with chemicals, dig sites, and buildings where plant and animal life used to be. I have a dream that people will have peace in their heart and stop hurting each other. I have a dream that one day there will be world peace. I have a dream that people will one day all act like brothers and sisters. Amen. So just like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we all have dreams, and we have to work to make those dreams happen. Thank you so much, dear
Discover these words. Also, he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. Yeah. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, mm -hmm. an exceeding great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Mm -hmm. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come into the land of Israel. I want to talk about you will rise again. You will rise again. We, the United States of America, is as the Israelites were in their days. When we look at the text, we realize that because of sin, because sin had ravished the nation, they are now a group of dry bones. I told you last week that these bones are disjointed. These bones are discouraged. And these bones are devastated. You can tell by the conversation that the bones are having. The bones themselves speak up. The bone says, we ourselves are dry, we are hopelessness. In other words, we represent hopelessness. In other words, hope has been lost. He says that these dry bones saying that they are cut off. 
Again, I say these bones are disjointed, they are discouraged, and they are devastated. But when we look at the text that we read today, verses 9 through 14 points out other things about these bones. Israel is not only dry, but they are dead, they are dry, they are disconnected. These bones are hopeless, they are helpless, and they are humiliated. I suggest to somebody that's under the sound of my voice today that you may be dead. You may be dry. You may be disconnected. You may be facing helpless situations. You may be facing hopeless situations. And because you are dry dead bones, you are probably humiliated. It's all because of sin. We find ourselves in the thick of sin. We find ourselves not motivated. It's all because of sin. Sin has a way of taking us further than we intended to go. Sin has a way of making us stay lower than we intended to stay. And sin will cause us to pay a price that we never intended to pay. Matter of fact, I like to say it like this. Sin will cost us more than we are able to pay. It's all because of sin. So the Israelites find themselves in a bad way because of sin. The Israelites are in this valley of dry bones. The Bible says that Ezekiel was talking to God and God began to, to take him into the midst of a valley full of dry bones. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, this valley is full of dry bones. I submit today, as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King and all that he has done, I submit today that we find ourselves in hopeless situation, even worse than the civil rights movement. That's right, That's right. I believe we are disconnected. I, I believe that we are dead. I believe I, that we are dry. I believe that we are helpless, hopeless, and humiliated. Shame is all about us. Our lives are not productive. Thank God for the children today that they still have dreams. Amen, amen. Thank God that children can stand and articulate their dreams. Thank God that children are still looking forward to dreams. They're still looking forward to being somebody. They're still looking forward to being different. They're looking forward to to living their lives on the top and not on the bottom. Amen. Thank God that we have children that are hopeless, but they know that there is hope somewhere. Amen. Amen. Thank God that there are children that feel sometimes helpless, but, but they know that there is help in the Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank God that we have children that even in the midst of peer pressure and peer pressure, they find themselves not humiliated to the point where they are going to give up. That's right. That's right. Let me submit to both the young and the season today. Don't give up. All right. All right. That's right. Don't give out. All right. And don't give in. God still has hope. I told you on last week that as we exemplify that we are in the presence of God, God is blessing anyway, anyhow. I told you on last week that, that God influence is the Holy Spirit and the influence of God is present with us. I said to you last week that we ought to have a revelation from God. We ought to be, even though we're set in the valley, God wants to hear from us and we need to hear from God. Amen. Amen. Our faith should be placed in the living God, the Lord himself. In order for us to see miracles, we must call on the miracle work. That's right. That's right. God himself yes. is the miracle yes, worker. Yes. Said to you last week, when we obey God, change happens. Yes. Good things happen. Yes. 
promises are renewed because we serve a God who will always keep his promise. That's right. That's right. Closed out last week by telling you that God is not finished hmm. with you yet. That's right. When we look at verse number 7, we find that God wasn't finished with these bones. Mm -hmm. When we look at verse number 7, we, we discover that God is still at work around us. God is doing some things even in the midst of our disastrous situation. Even in the midst of dead dryness, in the midst of hopelessness and helplessness, God is still moving on our behalf. Yes, yes. Thank you. Let me tell you, we ought to stay with God. We ought to stay with the God that's looking out for us when we can't look out for ourselves. Right. Ezekiel said there was a valley full of dry bones. There was a bone here, bone there, the bone everywhere. And these bones were discombobulated. Right. These bones needed to hear the word of the Lord. Yes. God says to Ezekiel, he says, Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. He says prophesy to these bones. This word prophesy means to speak with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Speak with inspiration. Mm -hmm. Speak according to the word of God. Speak God's word so God can turn the situation around. Anybody in the room need God to turn that situation right. around? Right. Anybody in the room will testify today if it had not been for the Lord. Right. I would not have known where I would be. Let me tell you, the reverse is that's true. If it had not been for the Lord, you can't make it even further than what you made. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been pushing up things. I would have been dead and gone out. Trees and pets would have been covering me up. And my, my, my body would have gone back to earth to earth. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Yes, but God saw fit one more yes, time. I said God saw fit yes, one more time yes, to spare me one more year. And I'm glad about it. I'm thankful yes, for it. And yes, God has continued to bless us. So when you're dead, when you're dry, when you're disconnected, you need to hear the word yes, of the Lord. Yes, what would it be like if we were rushed to the word of the Lord like we were to the funeral? All right. That's right. What would it be like? What would the world be like if we were rushed to, rush to hear the word of the Lord like we rushed to family reunions? All right. What would it be like if we rushed to hear the word of the Lord like we rushed, rushed to sporting events? Right. What would it be like if we rushed to hear the word of the Lord like we rushed to party? Being right. packed out. Everywhere you look, there's, there's a people here, mm -hmm. there's a people there, <laughs> and there's a people everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would it be like mm -hmm. if men, women, boys, and girls would love to hear sure. the word of God? Yes, yes. The sporting events, football games, basketball games are going on. The same person who got bad sugar. Never get sleepy doing that event. Their sugar doesn't take the best of them until they hear the preacher's voice. Some kind of way, sugar, low blood, and high blood just jump on folk in the church house. All right. It says that our our lives are not geared toward the excitement of the word of God. Mm -hmm. yes. One guy was down to the star of hope and he was up speaking, giving his little lecture. And, and as he was speaking, he looked over and he saw a brother sleep. He said, hey, wake that brother up over there. The brother next to him said, you woke him up, you put him to sleep. <laughs> you will rise again. Yeah. Yeah. We're going through things. We, we are bombarded by 
stuff. Life is different from what it was doing and before the COVID-19 era. Yeah. Life has changed and, and people have gotten relaxed. And, and I believe, I believe that at funerals and weddings, when people yeah. are packing out the place, I believe that 75 to 90% of them do not hear the word of the Lord on a regular basis. All right. How can, how can we relate to that preacher? It's because when we hear the word, it gives us some spark. Yes. It gives us some excitement. Mm -hmm. It gives us enthusiasm because of the word. So I'm going to go a young man in a wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair and he was a member of this big huge church. And he had one of those industrial vacuums. And he was in a wheelchair and he had the music playing in the background. Mm -hmm. And in his wheelchair, he was pushing and pulling the back. Mm -hmm. After he finished the center aisle, he would go and he would lean over and unplug the vacuum cleaner. He would go to the side and he would push and pull mm -hmm. the vacuum cleaner. And when he finished that, he would go down through the aisles and go down through the rows and, and he would push and pull. The vacuum cleaner. It wasn't an electric chair. It was just a manual chair. And he was rolling with one arm and pushing and pulling with the other. Amen. I believe we need that enthusiasm. Yes. I believe we need that conviction. Yes. I believe the word of God needs to be heard by us all over the world so that things can get better. Yes. Yes. We, found out, we, we found out that we can't legislate it to be better. Mm. We found out we can't vote it to be better. Uh. We found out that one one is pointing finger at the other and and that and they're in the midst of the same thing. Yeah. Let me tell you, the Congress can't get it. All right. The president can't get it. Yeah. The governor can't get it. We have to get it from hearing from God yeah. and God hearing from us. All right. God. Yeah. The writer says he prophesied. Mm -hmm. And when he prophesied in verses seven and eight, it says when he prophesied. He did what God commanded him to do. Mm -hmm. Our first point to you is we can be blessed when we do what God commands us to do. Blessings will fall when we do what God commands us to do. He says prophesy means to speak with enthusiasm, speak the word of God through the inspiration of God. We must, and you don't have to be a preacher to to speak the word of God with inspiration. Amen. We have to make sure that we speak more God's word All than right. man's word. All right, now. We have to be sure to speak more what God has to say than what men have to say. Amen. And we must do it with enthusiasm. Yes. We must do it with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, so I prophesied. Mm -hmm. And when I prophesied, I prophesied to dead bones. Let me just share with you. Sometimes you got to talk to your deadness. All right. yeah. Sometimes you got to talk to that that is no longer moving. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to talk to that one that hadn't shown up yet. Sometimes you got to talk to your situation and say, situation, get right. All right. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord. Yeah. We, we talk to folks who can't do us any good. Mm -hmm. We need to talk to the Lord and then talk to our situation and we must be enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm. He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded and when I prophesied, there was a noise. Mm -hmm. When I prophesied, there was a rattling. Mm -hmm. When I prophesied, the bones connected and came together bone to bone. When I prophesied, he said, when I prophesied, the bone to bone came together and sinews and the skin or flesh covered the bone. Mm -hmm. The skin came up on the bones. Mm -hmm. Through the word of God, dead stuff mm -hmm. can come to life. That's right. Dead stuff can, can come to life because we need to understand that it's the same God that made us. It's the same God who keeps us. It's the same God who makes us who we are. He is God, and he never stopped being God. He's always God. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. He yes, Lord. is 
the self existing. All right. God says that skin came and covered them, hmm. covered over them, but there was no breath in them. Hmm. It leads us to the text today. There was no breath in them. Hmm. Let me tell you, because you got skin, because you have flesh, because you have bones, because you have tendons and sinews, as the Bible call it, if you're not breathing, you're still dead. I, 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 I contend today that there are folk walking around with tendons. There are people walking around with sinews. There are people walking around with bones. There are people walking around with flesh over their bones. But they are part of the group of the walking dead. They have no purpose. They have no focus. They have no goals. And, and because they have no focus and no goals and yeah. no purpose, they are just a member of the walking dead club. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, the flesh came upon them, they still weren't living because they had not breath. Mm. This word breath in the original Hebrew means that they they didn't have the spirit. They didn't have the wind. They were dead. Mm -hmm. Too many times churches are coming together mm -hmm. and they still don't have breath. We're just going through the motion. New beginning, let's don't go through the motion. All right. All right. All right. All right. New beginning, let's become a living, breathing organism yeah. that God has called yeah. us to be. Right. Let's make things happen yeah. for the will of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The other problem, the other problem with the with the Israelites is that they they found themselves worshiping the created more than the creator. Amen, amen. Let me just say to you, don't let your goals get in the way of you worshiping God. Amen. Don't, don't let your dream get in the way of you worshiping God. Don't let your personal situation get in the way of you worshiping God. Whatever you do, keep God in first place. Keep God. The Israelites didn't keep God in first place, and because they didn't keep God in first place, now they're in a valley full of dry bones. The next point to you today: When God begins a good work in you, He continues it. Whenever God begins a good work in you, God is good enough. God, He's mighty enough. God, He is God, and He's able to continue it until the day that Jesus returns. That's right. That's the word. God, God began working on His bones. The, 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 the man of God prophesied to the bone. Mm -hmm. There was a rattling. There was a noise. The bones connected to bones. And these bones that connected to each other began to get skin and tendons and sinews on them. Mm -hmm. but then the breath was missing. Yes. As the word of God continued, the man kept prophesying. Ezekiel kept prophesying and there came breath. God began a good work and God can make sure the good work continues. Next point to you today, the Holy Spirit gives life. All right. All right. I said the Holy Spirit gives life. Yes. Yeah. Our prayers give way to the Holy Spirit. And as we request of God, God gives life by way of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. You know, we, we've been saying it all the time that, that I saw his spirit lead him. Mm. Because if a man is present hmm. and a man does not have the breath of God, well, that man is no longer sight. He just becomes yeah. limp. Hmm. That's right. He actually dies. That's right. A few Sundays ago, we saw a man in front of national TV die hmm. because the breath has left him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's living and now he's he's sanctified and now he's telling men, women, boys and girls if it had not been for the Lord on my side how many people don't realize that when the Lord brings them back they don't realize that the Lord brought them back 
People say stuff like this and they're not of God. Oh, he's a fighter. I know he's going to fight through this. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what kind of fighter you are. If God doesn't breathe breath into you, you can keep on fighting, keep on fighting, and you still will be dead. Still be dead. So when, when I'm laying flat and you're looking and hoping for me to get back up, don't talk about the fighter I am. Talks about the victory that Jesus is able to give all of us. Because it doesn't matter how big a fighter I am. It's during that moment that I cannot fight. That God revives me and, and speaks life into me. Thank you, Master. It was, a, it was the day. It was the day. Sunny, sunny day in May. Stephanie and Stephanie and Gary were getting ready to get married in the Memorial City Mall area some years ago, and I was one of the videographers on the scene, and, and Gary was partying. They had already, they had already pledged their lives to each other for better and for worse, for richer and for poor, and sickness and in health to death do his part. It was a glorious day. We made our way around to the reception hall, and Gary was dancing with his six, eight-year-old grandmother. He was dancing with her. He was whipping her out, and she had this big grin on her face because Gary, who was unsaved, had just married a saved girl in Stephanie. All right, all right, all right. Gary, Gary was swinging her out. The grandmother liked her. The family liked her. Everybody was on one accord. Both families were celebrating. Gary swung his grandmother out, and when he brought her back, she collapsed to the floor. Oh, how many of you know that? How many of you know that in the midst of a celebration? Trouble can hit. All right, all right. In the midst of one of the greatest celebrations of all time, trouble can take place. She collapsed on the floor. I rushed to this woman's side and I said, I know CPR. And then a photographer put, put down her camera and she said, let's do it. And I began to push and she began to blow. And for 45 intense moments, I pushed and she blew. Police officer was there, but he couldn't chime in because he was out of his jurisdiction. He's standing on the side now, down on his knees, coaching us through it. Keep pushing. You're doing a good job. I said, well, why don't you help us out? No, I can't help you out. And so we pushed for 45 minutes and blew for 45 minutes. I saw God give this woman life. And I saw God snatch life away. And I saw God give her life. And I saw God snatch life away. For 45 minutes, it was tense. It was a moment of heroicity, but we just kept pumping and pushing and blowing and pushing. Then the paramedics came by and they just whistled right on by us getting lost. My Lord. We just had to keep pushing yeah. and blowing because this lady was dead hmm. as long as we didn't push and blow. Hmm. She was out of here as long as we didn't push and blow. We had to breathe for her and we had to push for her. We had to get blood flowing to every extremity of her body. And then when the animal finally shows up, I am like a rag doll now. And I began to bag off. And he said, no, I'll keep going until I get my tools out. So another 20 minutes, we got to push and blow. Because when the animal shows up, the paramedics don't get in a hurry. Because they don't want to be beat up. They don't want to. So you see, you have to put your own mask on on the flight before you put somebody else's mask on. So they are taking their time. They are moving fast, but they are not running. Mm. When the lady left, she was listening. Mm. They rolled her way on the stretcher. Mm. The music began to play just a little slowly. Mm. I said to the DJ, bring the music up just a little bit. Give them something to, to rely on. Mm -hmm. This lady is living. Mm -hmm. We thank God for it. This lady goes to the hospital and she's living. 20 minutes later, Gary gets the call. Mm -hmm. And his grandmother, Francis, mm -hmm. took a running start, ran to the corner, balled up in his fetal position, and he declared that he killed his grandmother. Mm -hmm. The party was over. I said to his in-laws, whenever the funeral takes place, let me know this is my number. Mm -hmm. They called me already. It was just two of us looking like two flies on a bowl of milk. Mm -hmm. I made my way to, to Baytown, Texas the day of the funeral. It was at a funeral home, and I drove up, and now I'm one fly on a bowl of milk. Mm -hmm. 
But I went in and I found Gary. He ran to me and said, man, you really are a Christian. And he hugged my neck. And we went outside and we stood outside. And when we stood outside on the parking lot next to the funeral home, I began to tell Gary, Gary, what you need to know is that every year this time, the devil is going to remind you that your grandmother died on your wedding day. Your wife will be frustrated. Your marriage will go down the drive. But you can change that right now if you just hear the word of the Lord. So right there under the streetlights, right there outside on the parking lot to the funeral home, Gary bowed his head. And when he bowed his head, he invited Jesus Christ in his life to be his Lord and his Savior. At that time, it didn't matter what color I was. It didn't matter how well I've been knowing Jesus. He bowed his head that day and received Jesus Christ as his personal Savior right there at the funeral home. I want to say to you that whenever life gets out of here, life can come into here. Gary received Christ that day. He took some Bible tracts from me and he went back in and he began to share Christ with everybody in the funeral home. He said to them, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm saved because my mama died. I'm my grandmother died. I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. So I said to him, Gary, now you can rejoice. Every anniversary, you can rejoice and remember the good times and not the bad times. Remember that because of your grandmother's death, you were able to come to Jesus Christ. And now you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. I declare, if situations are like that with you, you can be saved right here, right now in this morning. You can be born again. You can be saved right where you are. If you're on your couch, you can be born again. Because when God begins a good work in you, he continues that work. And the Holy Spirit gives us life. Yes, yes. The next point to you is found in verse number 9. The word of God enables us to rise again. Yes. The word of God enables us to rise again. It's God's word that gives us life. It's God's word that enables us to get up again. Stop being so embarrassed and get along with God. Yeah. I know you were wrong. I know they did you wrong. I know you didn't see it coming. But don't lay down and give up. You can rise again. When the doctor has bad news, you can rise again. When friends and family members walk out on you, you can rise again. When you have more debt than you have money, you can rise again. When you have more issues than you have solutions, you can rise again. Yes. All right. Look at what the text says. The text declares that the, when he prophesied, breath came upon them. And verse number 10 says, I prophesied as he commanded me, as God commanded me, as God had given me least to prophesy, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up on their feet. All right. Let me just share with you. The word of God enables us to rise up. Mm. So don't get, don't, don't go a pity party. Don't get so upset until the devil can, can keep you in a rut. I, I know you made some bad decisions. I, I know you lied. I know you did some things that were wrong. And I know you're still wrestling with it. But don't give up on God because God is not giving up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. God says that you can rise again. And when God says you can rise again, you can get up. You can sit up, get up. And it doesn't matter whether you got yourself there or somebody else put you in that predicament. God says you can rise again. You have hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. You can rise again. The next point is God enabled Israel to rise up as a great and mighty army. There's a war going on out here. We need an army to fight this thing. And we need an army that is united in strength. We united in hope. We need an army to fight it because we can't do it on our own. You need somebody praying for you. You need somebody walking with you. You need somebody who will sit with you. Not necessarily talking to. Sometimes you need somebody just to sit there and look at you. Sit there and spend time with you. Sometimes you need somebody to encourage you. You are not an army by yourself. The Bible 
Bible says they stood up like a mighty army. We are mighty army for the Lord. We, the church has more power than she knows. The church has more victory than she can stand. The church is the power source for today's economy. The church is the power source for today's element. The church herself can do things that no other establishment can do. Because the rest of the organization, the church is an organism. And then the organism is a living, breathing organism. Forget about who left the army. You keep fighting in the army. The Bible says they stood up like a mighty army. Thank God for the new beginning church that we haven't given out. That we haven't given up. That we have not quit. And then it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who leads the army. God is with the army. And when God is with the army, the army has victory. When God is with the army, the army has power. When God is with the army, the army can make it even without those who are not with it. The Bible, the Bible says that these same dead, dry, discombobulated bones yeah. stood up yeah. like a mighty army. Yeah. They stood up. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the New King James Version, it says like an exceeding army. Huh. Exceeding army, meaning that because God is connected, this God that we are talking about, the self-existing God, this God is the exceeding God. He can do exceedingly above anything we can ask or think because he's God and he's willing, able and ready to make you an exceeding army. All right. Thank God for Jesus. We are an army. We are fighting for the Lord. When we hear and obey the word, we are a great army. All right. When we disobey, we're not a great army. That's right. When we hear and we obey the word, we are a great army. That's why, that's why we're studying the word. That's why we're listening to the word. That's why we are reading the word. That's why we hear the word in Bible study. That's why we hear the word in, in Sunday school. That's why we prepare for Sunday school. That's why we have quiet time alone with ourselves. Because we know the value of God's word. God's word. It's God's word that makes us a mighty army. It's God's word that enables us to defeat the, defeat the devil. Yeah. It is God's word that makes us who we are. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. King quoted scripture and didn't announce the text. He said that one of these days, the crooked places shall be made straight. Yeah. Yeah. One of these days, the high places shall be made low. One of these days, little black boys and little white girls will be walking together hand in hand. One of these days, my four little children should not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Heaven is going to be an array of people, different flavors, different colors, and different hues. It's because God is the God who makes us who we are. Young people, don't be ashamed of your color. Don't be ashamed of your race. Don't be ashamed of your background. Don't be ashamed of where you came from, where you came. Just know that God is with you. My next point. My next point. My next point is God will place you in a place of blessings. It's right there in the text. The Bible says, God says that this is the whole verse. Number 11 it says that this is the whole house of Israel. They will indeed say, even when you are bad on yourself, you, you're talking down on yourself. But Mephibosheth yeah. said, oh, I'm a broke down dog. And because I'm a broke down dog, what does the king want with me? Stop talking about yourself like All that. Right. You have to speak life into yourself in an in inspirational way. Don't talk bad about yourself. Your nose is the way it is because God made it. Your lips are the way they are because God made it. Your forehead is the way it is because God made it. Yes, Lord. Stop saying, stop saying. One, one guy was in seminary one night and he said, he got his grade, he wasn't satisfied with his grade, he threw his books down and he said, I'm just a dunk. Huh. You are not a dunk. 
God made you who you are. And you can do this. You can make it through this. Life can be made better for you. You got to trust in the Lord. So whatever you do, know that God will take you to a place of blessing. All right. You got to hang in there. All of us have made some mistakes. And all of us are making mistakes. That's right. Just know that when you're on the same team that God is on, God sees you, God hears you, God has not forgotten you, and God will take you to a place of blessing. He said, Israel, I'm going to take you back to your home. I'm going to take you back where things are going well for you. I'm going to take you to a place that flows with milk and honey. Whatever you do, don't get down on yourself. Many of us have forgiven ourselves from many years ago. But God is able yes, he is. to bring us back. God is able mm. to bless us. And God is able to make us better than what we ought to. Mm -hmm. My final point I'll leave you long is found in verse number 14. Verse 14 says that I will put my spirit in you. Uh -huh. And you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. You shall. Then, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord who has spoken to you, and I am the Lord who has performed it. I am the Lord who says it. I am the Lord that talks about it. He says that you will know that I am the Lord. My final point is, God's purpose is that we all get to know Him. And He wants us to get to know Him as God. Get to know Him as Lord. We don't have to know Him as the one who gives us stuff. He wants us to know him for who he is. We need to get to know him for who he is. He is God. He's exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think. He's able to give us stuff that we ain't even prayed about. All right. So when you walk with him, he just bless you. I received some lessons that my brothers didn't receive because I spent time under the car putting on transmission. With my dad. It looked like that Ford, that Ford Maverick, the 71 Ford Maverick, and, and, and daddy thought that we didn't we didn't have enough of them. So he got one 71 Ford Maverick, then he got a 72 Ford Maverick, and then every November we are outside laying on the ground at night, shining a light so we can see. We are laying under that car, putting like the transmission went out every nine months. Wow. Because we couldn't afford another vehicle, and Mama needed it the next day, Daddy and I spent our time laying under that Ford Maverick. Yes, that's a good. We laid up on it, and we laid up on it, and the whole time we laid up on it, I'm thinking I'm laying up on it so I can help him hold up and and jack up and and maneuver this way and that way. It's not because that see God had a different purpose. It's not because I was there to do any mechanic work. It was because I was spending time with Dad. And I got to know Dad better than anybody else got to know him because we worked together. We spent time together. We dealt with things together. And we lived life together. And I got to know Dad like no one else got to know him because we spent time talking together. Let me tell you today that if you spend some time alone with God, you will get to know God. You will get to know his food. You will get to know his action. And you will get to know who he is. Our whole purpose on planet Earth is to get to know him. And to discern who he is among everybody else. And we need to get to know him in an intimate way. We got to spend quality time with God. Mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah. Jesus knew the Lord. Because yeah. he spent time with him. Right. He spent eternity with him. Eternity past. Then he spent eternity present with them right now. And then he spent an eternity future with them. And if you're hearing my voice today, and you've never spent quality time with God, this is your moment. God wants men, women, boys, and girls to know him and to know him in an intimate way. Do you want to know him? The same Jesus that spent time with God. Spend time with mankind. Walk these mundane souls. Gave sight to the blind. The same Jesus blessed people. And he blessed those who hated them. Yeah. 
The same Jesus took a tree to walk up Calvary's hill. He died between two thieves. He had a borrowed tool because he was in transition. That same Jesus got up with all power early that Thursday morning. He rose. He rose again. And he rose so you can rise. One more time. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to trust Jesus. The door is open. Will you come? Will you say, Jesus, I was wrong? And you were right. Will that be one, two, three, four, five that will come? The door is open. Is there one that will trust Jesus as their Savior? Is there one that will give their life to Jesus Christ? Is there one that will say, Jesus, I believe the story. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. If that is you, just come. Whether you're in the room or whether you're online, you can get to know him right now. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come to Jesus just as you are? If you can believe the story, just bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you're now saved. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. And when you die, you will lift your eyes in heaven. And if you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. The New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention in the main attraction. Just inbox us and let us know you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston, Texas. Either globally or locally, you can be in the Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he's already done? God has given us another chance and another opportunity to come before him. And we thank him for what he has already done. Amen. Amen. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through time and offering and sacrificial gift. I say it is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord. Now let me just say this to you. This is a new year. This is a brand new year. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please, sirs, and ma'am. Why don't we start this year off right with the Lord financially? By giving tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings are 10% of your gross income. Tithes are 10% of your gross income. And if you're confused about what the tithe look like, you take your, your check stub or your SSI check stub or whatever stub you get or whatever they put in your bank and just move your decimal point one place to the left that will give you 10%. Amen. I want you to partner with us here at the New Beginning Church. If you as a member have not been giving 10%, I say to you today, give 10% and watch what God does. 10% of your gross income. And watch what God does. Watch what God does. And then the offering is extra what you choose to do. So try God. Trust God. Watch what God does with your treasure. And you think that if you're overflowing with blessings now, watch what God will do if you just trust God. 
Because God can do more with your 10% than you can do with your 90% anyway. And all 100% belongs to him. Trust him. Don't fake it. Don't talk like you're doing it. Just give 10%. Unto Lord, and those who are listening online, since you're listening to the New Beginning Church online, this ought to be the place where you send your tithes and offering, unless you go into a local congregation. Amen. If you don't have a church home, if you're in between church homes, give your 10% to the New Beginning Church, as we are the one who's ministering to you. Amen. Let's read these verses together, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. Let's read together. Whosoever soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whosoever soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 and 16. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us financially. Now, Lord, we come before you to lay before you the first day of the week those blessings that you have given us, that you have granted us. Bless us to return our tithes and offerings back to you, not reluctantly, not out of compulsion. But, God, we know you love a children of In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. For those of you who are giving electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. That is... P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Baptist Church will be our special guest. 
Everyone is encouraged to participate and attend this great event. Amen. Please remember those in our prayers. Martha Largo, Malvin White Woods family, Davis and DeMarc family, Daniel Gavin, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Lorraine Orr, William Urban, World Peace, Shabanu Jones, Ed Brennan and family, Dorothy Sellers, Billy Banks, Pastor Warren Odom, Woods Hemingway, and Davis family. Thank you. Maybe we're going to help you down next time, mm -hmm. or, or Isaiah or somebody is going to help you down next time. Amen. 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 God is such an awesome and such a way God, he has blessed us again. Amen. And he's tremendously blessing us. So immediately after the benediction, we will, we will talk about 30 years of ministry at the New Beginning Church. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to the Holy Street Church coming to be with us. Uh, they're a brand new pastor, about a year and a half, Pastor Murray G. Martin. He and I uh, were brothers in the ministry when there was 21 of us present. So we want to welcome that church. And if I forget, young men, uh, all our men in our church are young men today. Amen. So if I forget on, on the 12th, we want to make sure that Saturday we meet on the 11th. We want to meet and make sure we arrange the seating in here in a way about five o'clock that afternoon. That's March 11th. We want to meet and rearrange the seating so we can pack everybody in here. Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to a glorious time in the Lord. So who's going to remember March 11th, 5 p.m. for me? Guess what, brothers? The women going to remember for you. <laughs> the women going to remember to, to be right here. So we're going to go into our meeting. Let us stand to be dismissed. And we will, we will go into, into our meeting.